Welcome to Monster Vault. This is Ripley Stonebrook. And this is Crandall. Hello. Say hi, Crandall. Hi. <laughs> Beer. <laughs> oh, wine. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. What do we got? Website, Spooky Room Productions. Instagram is Ripley Stonebrook. And we do have an announcement. Art show. St. John Art Center, Yay. November 5th. I will be having an art show. So if you're in St. John, New Brunswick. Go to the St. John Art Center. Which November is 5th, and it will be continuing on for about a month. So that's pretty good. And every piece sold will pay for an art class for a junior high school art student. There's no downside. There's no downside. So even if you don't really like the art just buy it for the kids <laughs> yeah the kids they need help do it for the kids oh god do you not care about the kids i mean this stuff's gonna be kind of spooky so you should like it and well, i guess we'll explain what we're doing here today for anybody that's new this is monster vault where we rate monsters monsters, monsters. we give them the scores from one to ten in various categories that are picked up meticulously through a rigorous study yes. in the monster vault uh Laboratory? Yes. Laboratory. We'll go with that. And we might not get all the numbers right, but it doesn't really matter because they're monsters and they're not real. No. What? what? We're not going to get the, what? the numbers right. Well, oh, I mean, absolutely. Every number is completely accurate. I mean, that's, you, yeah. They cannot be challenged, although you will challenge them <laughs> on Instagram or uh, send us an email. It's on the website. Do it. I give you the email, but who knows if it's going to change. Just keep going to the website. It'll be there. <laughs> But it is at Spooky Room, or no, Spooky Room Productions at gmail.com. So, Rip, what monster are we talking about? Today? Well, this is our Frankenstein series. Four monsters that are Frankenstein or Frankenstein adjacent. First one was the Universal Frankenstein. Second was Reanimator. We call them Reanimates. The Reanimator Reanimates. Yeah. And today we're doing the Golem. Oh, let me write that on the board. Put it up there. The Golem. Done. Crandall. Yeah? What do you know about the Golem? I think in the movie Dogma there was a shit demon that they said was a Golem. Oh, really? So that's, I think that's all I know. Well, there you go. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty spot on. So the golem is a creature. Uh, it's made out of clay, like Adam in the Bible. And it's made by a rabbi, who then does some mysterious spells and such, and can bring it to life. Okay. Ta-da! There's a lot of old stories about it. They go back into, like, the 1700s or so. And they usually are various. The golem is made to save the people, and then it is put away in some mysterious and secret place to come out when it's needed to serve the people again oh so he's a good guy yes he is a good guy is although he? the stories usually end with him doing something horrible and that's why they have to put him away mm. otherwise they just keep them around all the time to like help on the farm and stuff mm -hmm. you know like the classic like the uh in fantasia robots. where the brooms are they just keep on sweeping <laughs> yes that comes from the i was thinking stories. about robots who like come to they come to life and, yes and, uh, they keep doing the same chore over and over, or they just go on a rampage, oh, and they wreck wait, all your golem, stuff. A golem does it thing, a thing over and over? Well, yeah, unless you tell it to stop. Uh, oh, wait, wasn't that there something on The Simpsons with a golem, and they put paper in its mouth? That is the golem, Treehouse of Horror, yes. And then they ended up making a Play-Doh golem, when Fran Drescher was the voice for a lady golem. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's that one, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. So the legends have a few <laughs> different ways of making a golem. So you can have a scroll with like a spell written on it, and you put it in his mouth, or you can have a word that is written on his forehead, and it'll translate to life. But if you scratch out one of the letters, it'll become death. Or it can mm -hmm. just have an amulet around its neck, which will bring it to life. And when you take it off, that will do it as well. So there's a few different ways that the stories work out, and of course they're stories. So. You know, there doesn't have to be a right one or a wrong one. 
But today, we are talking about the Golem from 1920, The Silent Movie. Oh. Which is such a charming movie. I hadn't watched it until recently, like today, mm -hmm. for this. And it's fantastic. <laughs> there's literally a scene where for like five or six minutes, there's like the rabbi is summoning a demon and waving pentagrams around and there's smoke and fire and the demon actually appears and everything. And this is a 1920s silent movie. Smoke and everything. Mm -hmm. It is fantastic. Fantastic. It's not that long, but it is long for a silent movie. It's like 50 minutes. Ooh. Some of them go up to like 101 minutes, I think, which is pretty long. Do you have any information on the actors, directors, any of that? It's not really important because it's a silent movie, so it's not like they're going to be in something you're going to see. But Paul Wegener is the golem, I think, and also the director, and there's another director as well. And it's part of a three-movie cycle, so he made one movie about a golem in modern times, and then went back and made the prequel, which is the Golem movie that we have now, and then went and did a sequel, supposedly, but maybe it never got made. Mm. But we only have one of them. We've just got the middle movie, The Golem, which basically tells the same usual Golem story, but it's a little bit changed and it's a little bit simplified. And in that movie, he creates the Golem because the Emperor is going to have something bad happen to it. He knows this because he made his astrology chart and found out that something bad is going to happen to the Emperor. And so he built the golem to somehow assuage this or keep it from happening or whatever disaster that's going to come. Sure. But then the Emperor says, we are going to drive out the Jews from our country and they all have to leave. So then there's a little back and forth on that and the golem is made by this point so it ends up saving him and so the people all rejoice. But during the demon summoning scene, the reason we have to summon the demon is because he has to learn the magic word that he has to put in the amulet to put on the golem that will bring it to life. Now during the movie you'll see that he'll have the golem alive for a while, he does what it wants, and then he snatches the, the amulet off. <laughs> so after he's saved the emperor and he's decided to let the Jewish people stay, he goes to take the amulet off of the golem and the golem waves him away. Mm. He says, no. I'm not going to do it. So he jumps around a bit and he grabs it and then the golem <laughs> falls over and he's like, oh, that was a lucky bit of business. And then, of course, the golem ends up getting brought back to life again, fights off even more at that time. And he's like, ah, and then he goes on a little rampage and kills some people. And there's a love story in there. Mm -hmm. And there's also like some groping and fondling. And <laughs> you're like, this? by the golem? No, by the... On the golem? There's a love triangle between, uh, like, a knight and uh, the rabbi's daughter. Okay. And there, there's... Some, That's only two people. Yeah. Oh, the knight, the rabbi's daughter, and... It's a love thing, not a love triangle. Oh, okay. Yeah, so right. there, there, there's some groping he gets there. And it's, it's shocking to see. <laughs> and later on, the golem is... Uh, so the golem is brought to life to kill this knight because he's brought shame to the house. So he throws him off of a uh, the top of the tower, and then he grabs the woman by her hair mm. and drags her around town. But it's clearly a dummy yeah. because he's literally just she's got long ponytails that are like four <laughs> feet long that he drags her around by, and she's just flopping and bopping around behind him. Oh, and it, it's so freaky and weird because you're like watching it, like this is disconcerting. Because if this was a real person, she'd be dead. Yeah, it's weird. There's a lot of little moments in the movie that are actually really good. Mm. I was shocked. shocked. Because, you know, I like horror movies and even old-timey movies, but silent movies... It can be rough. They're rough. It but, rough. you know, the American ones are a lot worse. Mm. You know, when you're because this is a, you know, one of those European, it might have been German type of thing. I, don't know, I didn't look it up too much. I think it is a German movie. And they're usually okay, mm. but you're not going to spend a lot of time watching them. It's like if you watch Metropolis and you're like, oh, that's neat. <laughs> or one of those other old movies. Yeah, like, I see, I get it. Mm -hmm. it's, okay, yeah. Like, this it's, was I'm amazing at the time. That, yeah, I'm happy that it happened, but does it make for a compelling film to me? And the demon time? scene is completely out of nowhere. Like, I don't know why people don't talk about the middle of the movie. There's going to be a big demon summoning scene. Because they're like, oh, the story of the golem, and he comes, and da-da-da. Oh, yes, and the story I was telling is, um, they explain that the reason the golem is uh, trying to resist being put back to, or uh, being put down again, is that... The demon gave him the word to raise the golem, but because astrologically the time of this demon is passing, and so he's going to take back all of his creations, and this is explained in like a book or something like that. And so the demon's going to, or the golem's going to go crazy and start getting worse and worse and worse. Oh. Uh, mm hmm. We don't like to hear it. And in the end of the movie, the golem is actually defeated because he actually knocks down a pile of castle doors, 
which is funny because that's one of the things we said about Frankenstein is like, well, I can knock down a door, but not a big castle door. Yeah. The golem can knock down a big castle uh-huh. door. So he gets back into the little Jewish settlement, which has this big castle door, knocks it over, and there's just a bunch of kids there. <laughs> And so he picks up one of the, he picks up the girl and is like, oh my god, we're having that little Frankenstein moment here yeah, before he's Frankenstein. In a, in a river. He, well, that's what you're expecting. And the girl just goes <laughs> and just snatches the amulet off his off his uh, chest, and then he falls over. Oh. And it's just like, oh okay, well, all right, that's the end of the movie. Uh, and there's like a little da 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 da, da and then the movie just ends. You're like, oh okay, all right. They take the golem off and they're gonna put him somewhere and uh, supposedly to come back if required. I don't know. So that's the story of the Golden Movie, so 1920. So who's in control of the amulet? Is it the little girl because she got it off of? No, she ended up dropping it, and then I think they grabbed it and took it with the golem as well. Do you think the girl symbolizes anything? I don't know. <laughs> Innocence, maybe? Aww. I don't know. Because he picked her up, and I was like, is he going to smash her into the dirt? But wait, wait, uh, then wait, she just wait. snatched the amulet off. So what does the golem symbolize? Uh, I don't know. What? Okay. So it just, just isn't there. <laughs> What do you think? I have no idea. I didn't see the movie. Oh, all right. Like, there might have been some stuff, but I don't watch uh, horror movies on that level. So, yes. nah. Yeah, there's, no there's a monster, and he's stomping around, and uh, he, uh, and also, unlike Frankenstein, fire bad, mm-hmm. he actually grabs a big uh, flaming log and starts setting stuff on fire. <laughs> he's trying to attack people with fire, and uh, there's a big part where he sets the city on fire. Fire good. Call him fire good. <laughs> It's, it is weird watching it, knowing that Frankenstein is going to come out of far ways away and be far more popular. But you see so many of the same little elements there. Mm. It's really interesting. But we're not here for all the details and tidbits of the movie. But that we're is not? the most famous example that you're going to know. Uh, except for a lot of random stories about the goal of that you're going to run across. But that is the most famous amount of one. Powers. 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 Um, none? Can you give him power? Like, if you put, like, laser eyes and put it in his mouth or whatever, could he have laser eyes? See, that would be great. That would be fantastic. But I don't think so. Okay. But who knows? Like, maybe. With all this uh, rabbinic magic, who knows what could happen? <laughs> the pow- it's, it's, it's powered by God. Or demons. I don't know. Oh, okay. Because we're looking at the movie version who, you know, he had to get the demon to get the word and et cetera, et cetera. So who knows? But I'm going to go with not for this version. No special okay. powers. No special. So he's just strong. He is strong. And he's not that tall. He only seems to be, like, a little bit taller than all the rest of the people in the movie. So we're not even talking, like, Frankenstein tall. Mm. But maybe if the people in the movie are fairly tall, then Frankenstein tall. So he's a tall guy. He's, he's a tall, very, but he's strong. He can knock down their... Yes. Now, he is supernaturally strong, as opposed to Frankenstein, who's just a really big guy strong. Oh, yeah. Because he is doing things, because he's made of stone or clay, basically. Okay. So he's knocking down doors, he's pushing people around, and while you're watching him do his chores, he can cut wood forever. And mm-hmm. uh, there's one point where he's working a furnace, and he's pulling the lever that works the furnace super fast, and flames start <laughs> flying around, everyone's going, oh no! That's too much! So he's super strong, and I think that's about it. Now he can't talk, mm-hmm. and that's pretty much true of the legend as well. Although he does open his mouth and go, sometimes. <laughs> All right. But I think that would be his only power. Okay. You if know, you compare him to Frankenstein, yeah, can handle fire. But, mm-hmm. you know, we're not even sure if he's really fireproof. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, he's stone, well, so he wouldn't catch yeah. fire. But I, you know, I wouldn't call that a power, per se. Okay, so... So power is made of stone, super strong? I would say... I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm it's a sliding between, scale, and we got to compare to all these other I'm things. I'm between three and a four. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Compared that to all is, these other monsters, it's just like, he's like, just like, really strong, you know, it, it, it's three or okay, four. Okay, I'll give him a three. I'm gonna, I'll I'm go gonna, for the four. I'm going to give him a three. Okay. So I have Z, three and a half. Power three and a half. Mm-hmm. Strength three and a half. How's that compared to Frankenstein? Much higher, because Frankenstein is zero. Frankenstein got a two. You gave him a two? Yeah. Must have been charisma. And you gave him a two as well. <laughs> oh, you keep the uh, the breakdown and everything. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, the board has many delights and mysteries. When this is full, we'll, we'll Instagram the board. You guys can all see the uh, all the fine work that Crandall's putting in. <laughs> Crandall's the best assistant. Well, I gotta say, my handwriting isn't that great on the board, so don't roast me. But, uh, yeah. Look at well. how I'm writing it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go on the YouTube and find us and see how I have to write. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Oh, that's true. Yes, you can find this on YouTube, hopefully. <laughs> well, these aren't actually up yet as we're recording them, but by the time you hear this, it should be up there. Yeah, we should put it all over the blitz. Yeah, because these will come out probably bi-weekly, every two weeks. I think we're going to do something like that, because otherwise it just gets too crazy. we got mm -hmm. other stuff going on. i got Concordia, the role-playing game. i got this art show coming up. Come on, give him a break. Okay. Working on that album, everybody. Concordia is going to have a soundtrack just like Liar of Sword and Sorcery did. So I was going to say Loss, and that's why. Liar of Sword and <laughs> Sorcery. Liar of Sword and Sorcery. Classic. <laughs> but, so yeah, there's a lot going on. We're not going to go more than once every two weeks. And that's fine. There's video to edit, there's audio to edit. Crandall's doing all the editing, so. Except for some little bits and pieces. Yes. Next category. Bar fighting. What's the next category, Crandall? I think you'd like this one. I do. It's bar fighting. Bar fighting. Da, 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 da. I just like the idea of monster bar fighting. Yes. Can you explain bar fighting for the people? Okay. Bar fighting is uh, if the monster had its supernatural powers removed and it was just in a bar fight and it was just punching and kicking and whatever, what, what score would you give him? Bar fighting. That, uh, yeah, and now since the golem doesn't really have supernatural powers... <coughs> exactly, he's just got his usual fighting abilities. I yeah. must point out, he somebody tries to stab him, the knight tries to stab him when he's uh, caught with the daughter. Sure. And it does nothing. Well, he's I believe the dagger just bends, so... Ooh, made of stone! Oh my god. So that'll come up on bar yeah, fighting, you know, really grabbing broken fight. bottles, like, uh, yeah, he like, is way up there. Down? It, it, it doesn't appear to be anyone can take him down. Mm. They didn't, you know, get in there and start trying to use battering rams or anything, but all the normal people just got thrown to the side. And at one point during the movie, the way he saves the Emperor is because the ceiling starts collapsing. Because the rabbi was making um, visions appear, and one of them caused the roof to collapse. But the entire roof of the castle collapses, and the golem puts his hands up and stops it. So, hmm. he's pretty tough. Pretty tough. <laughs> like, he's going to be as far up there, I think, in you know, bar fighting without being a dinosaur or something. Or some other super large creature. Mm. So I'm going to give him an I eight because I need some wiggle room. You said eight? Yes. You know what? I know someone else he is going to come along that's a better can... bar fighter. Really? Well, we haven't finished all the monsters in the world yet. That's mm, true. Mm -hmm. But eight, definitely. I guess I would give him... I, want to... I probably want to give him a ten because if nothing can take him down... Mm -hmm. How could you lose a bar? You know, I'm going 10. Fuck it. Do it. It's your call. That's why ten. we average the numbers. So, average 9 bar fighting. That is a good bar fighting score. That's fabulous. That is a good score. Weaknesses. And the next category. Strange supernatural weaknesses that make it easy to kill him. In some way that would not be used on a human. Weaknesses. This one has one. Finally, we have a weakness on the board. Yay. And it's a biggie. If you could snatch that amulet off his chest... Oh, shit. I forgot about that. That's going to be a real fucking he downside. He goes in down. If anyone has it, grab... Oh, I forgot. Mm -hmm. I forget. Oh, I'm so stupid. That's why I gave him an eight. Oh, come on. Okay. I you have... can adjust your score. I'm going to have a score adjustment. I have to. All right. Bar fighting. I adjust it. Oh, I'm so dumb. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I'm gonna also going to give him an eight. So, I'm sorry, Golem. He is pretty good at defending that thing we see. The only reason the kid snatches it up is because he picks up he the kid disarmed. and, and kind of hangs out with her. It doesn't look like he's going to smash her. And then she goes, Poof, <laughs> grabs it. But Shit. everyone else is having a real hard time getting at it. So, okay, yes, okay. this one has a weakness. And it is a big one. Mm -hmm. And it is easy to do. You don't have to drive a stake through its heart. Uh, you don't have to find some magical spell. You don't have to go and get another item. You literally just have to snatch this thing off his chest. And it's like at eye height for humans. Yeah. You know? So it's not that hard. So I would give this guy like a weakness of five. Because it is hard to get at, but it's fairly easy to do. Mm -hmm. So I, the better I think he is at defending the amulet, the yes. higher the score? The higher the score. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to... Oh. Oh, hmm. I'm going to give him a four. Because that's a pretty big weakness. That's a pretty big amulet. weakness, right? This will hurt the goal and score, but compared to the other people we've had, like... And this is why this category is here. <laughs> Finally, we get a chance to use it, because it seemed pretty stupid up until now. Finally. Pack size. Pack size. Pack size. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Is this an infinite number? Like what? Oh, pack size is how many of these things are there? Oh yeah, I didn't explain. So, <laughs> uh, they're a little difficult to make. So it takes a lot of time. Uh, in the stories, not in the movie, they show the, they describe the ritual and it takes a certain amount of time. You have to go and get the right clay. You have to walk around it saying certain spells at certain times. And then finally you have to make the amulet and then, or the scroll, etc., etc. And it can only be done by a rabbi and etc. I think there's only going to be one at a time. Really? Yes. I would say so, just because it's so hard to make one. But then, okay, so you make one. Say it takes 20 years to make one. Right. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sure it's not that long, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you're you done with him. He's starting to pick up little girls. He snatches an amulet. Yeah. Put him in a closet. Sure. Start a new one? I mean, you still got the, the old one still. But the you one, can always bring him back anytime. You just oh, put so the amulet back on. It's not that you can't make a new one. It's just there's no reason. There's no reason to, and it's a lot of hassle. Like, when you got one, you got one. And if you destroy it, you don't want to have another one. Because you destroyed it for a reason. So I'm going to go with pack size one. Oh, no. Spookiness. <laughs> um, little spooky? Rock guy? Like, that's immediately supernatural. Unlike Frankenstein, where you're like, guy with scars. Yes. Or reanimates, which are like, uh, this just looks like a guy who's had a rough time. Maybe yeah. not even scars. Mm, so at least supernatural. A little spooky. He's big. I wonder if these chair squeaks are going to show up. Nope, they don't. <laughs> uh, what were we saying? Oh, yeah. So he's actually supernatural looking. He is made of stone. He's big. Um, maybe not scary looking, but still, like, seeing a statue walk around. like That freak people out in real life. Yeah. If you suddenly saw a statue, so... But he's friendly. Is he? Oh, well, yeah, most of the time he is, except when he's attacking. <laughs> As with all of us. <laughs> and you're right, you give Frankenstein a pretty high score because you're like, all men are scary? Yeah, I gave, <laughs> I gave him an extra point. So due to him actually being supernatural but not having any gory tentacles or Okay, teeth, can he run fast? Like, can I run away from him? Uh, actually, he is pretty slow. Mm -hmm. He is pretty slow. That reduces the spookiness. Wait, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Or does it increase? Because, I mean, the kind of plodding, you know, walk is kind of... And plus, scarier. he can walk because forever. We're talking about scariness. He's never going to stop. So, if you get tired, then he'll just keep on coming. So, eventually, he'll get you. Okay, does he have like, la like laser, laser eyes, eyes again? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, does he have like a, I don't know, radar or night vision or anything? Where no. Can, like, if I hide, no. so I say I run. Does he have some supernatural way of knowing where you are? Yeah. No. Mm. He seems kind of stupid. Like, he's like, goes and gets the groceries at one point and he has the basket under his arm. And the guy's trying to take the basket, and he has to tell him, put your arm out so I can take the basket off of it. Uh, so he's pretty dumb. Mm, hmm. Limbo. Yes. So, spookiness. I'd go with a five. Like three. All because right. Split the difference. Not that hard to get away from. I just think about the... <laughs> Actual way your world would change if you saw a statue walking around. You'd be like, supernatural shit exists? Four is pretty bad. I'd be Yeah, yeah, out. definitely. Kill factor. Kill factor. Ooh, another low score. Gores, etc. Yeah. Um, you haven't seen the movie, so no. <laughs> it's also a silent movie, so there's not going to be a lot of gore. But it's, it's pre-haze. So. Yeah, some okay, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> That's probably why there was groping. Yeah, there was a little bit of groping, yeah. It would have been funnier if the Golden was doing some groping. And apparently in the original movie that we don't get to see because it doesn't exist anymore, it was in modern times, and the Golem falls in love with the daughter. Uh-oh. And uh, so maybe there is some golden groping in that. We don't know. We don't know. We'll never know. We'll never know. But I'll assume there was. I'll assume there was. <laughs> what category? Kill, kill factors. So he throws a guy <laughs> off a roof, um, okay. and there is like a dummy. So you see the dummy go, yeah. and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. So that's a good kill factor. Um, and dragging the girl around, he doesn't kill her, but watching the little body bump around on the ground. It seems to have really affected you. It, it was very disconcerting. <laughs> Very disconcerting. All right, I'll give him so a I'm actually going to give this guy a kill factor. I'm going to give him a two. Gonna give him a two. Yeah. I was hoping for some like tear arms off, etc. Yeah. Keep ripping people in half. Nope. Because I mean, it was pre haze, so you can get away with some stuff. But nope, we'll go with a two. Okay, Sean. 
Now this is a yeah, you have to explain. Now this is... <laughs> now this is... <laughs> How scary is it because of where it is? Yeah, can it get to you? Can it get to you? That's a good way to explain it. Uh, so you're like, I think this is in Prague. So a little far away from us. Yeah. But in theory, like Frankenstein, could be made anywhere. There's nothing limiting it to, be there, to being there. Mm. And of course, there are always legends that there was more than one out there somewhere. Like, uh, you know, 100 years before, somebody made one here. 100 years later, someone makes one there. So in theory, it could be anywhere. But they're so rare, so well, I'm, I'm gonna Simon give it a two. A singular monster. I'm gonna give it a ten, like I did Frankenstein. All right. Because I do feel like he can go anywhere. He's coming at me. He'll he'll get me. So you said two. I'm gonna go two. That's exactly what we did for Frankenstein. At least we're consistent. Six. Oh. Would you fuck it? <laughs> well. Now, it's a big rock man, hmm. and uh, they're usually described as rather crude. Sometimes they don't even have mouths. So we're saying uh, they're like just a they're basically like a big lump, and then when the spell gives it life, sometimes some of the lumps turn into fingers. Hmm. So what I'm saying is there may not be a rock dong. <laughs> so How does the I'm not saying that's necessary to fuck it. No, you know it, some things could be done. And, you know, and he's got kind of like a, you know, a chiseled jaw. You know, he's kind of, you know... And he just writes... Handsome fuck, in a buff write, way. You just write fuck and you put that note in his mouth and he just fucks forever. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, I well, you, you get to order him around. You don't have to tell him to do the scroll. Oh, like yeah, 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 sorry. I forgot. So you're like, fuck me! <laughs> okay, somebody... You need a safety <laughs> word with a golem, though. Otherwise, he will not stop. Yeah, mm. that's not good. And he, he seems pretty rough and stupid. That's the thing. I feel like he would, there would be no subtlety. There's no safety there. There's no safety there. Mm. Yeah. And if you, know, you pull the amulet off, then accidentally in the throes of passion, this giant rock man just falls on top of you. There's a tip. If you're fucking a, a stone golem. Tape the amulet down. I was going to say, don't be on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, really, you can, you can just be humping furniture. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Now, last week I said, uh, or last episode, for the reanimates, I gave the reanimates a one, because I thought of, like, just kind of, if there was restraints involved, perhaps. Oh, something more. could be done, yeah. But uh, with this one, I don't think I can even give it's a one. It's not much. No, I got nothing there, too. It's not I'm giving, I'm giving him a zero. A would you fuck it of a zero. I'm also giving it a would you fuck it of a zero. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Not fuckable. Not fuckable, the golem. I mean, not ugly, but... <laughs> I mean, there's people out there, you can say the same thing, you're like, uh, you know, he's not unattractive, but not fuckable. I think you've already decided laser eyes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, laser eyes. I mean, sure. it is cool. If you, if you really could just draw anything on that scroll and then it just happened, that would be great. <laughs> or, you know, you jam another, like, write something on the back of the amulet or something, or just, you know, jam it in his mouth, whatever. Whatever the thing is, that'd be great. If you're like, all of a sudden you're like, Superman, X-ray vision, just write that on there and you're good to go. That mm. would be awesome. I like the, um, you know, limitlessness of his power, I guess. But I do think that it, that we need better story for the people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who surround the golem. I think that's my biggest problem. Because as a monster, he's fun and not fuckable, but you know. He's got stuff going on. Yeah, and, he's good. And yeah. the thing is, is afterwards, it seems like he said he wants to not be turned off. So he has some free will. He's got things going on. He Maybe he's just working for the demon. Maybe he had plans. Who knows what he's going to do with that good little girl? We don't know. Maybe he was like, oh, kids, they seem great. And he was going to do something <laughs> nice. Who he knows? Running an orphanage. In the um, there we go. It's the okay. We, that's how you can make it better. See, the golem in the, ends up running an orphanage. In the old golem legends, he doesn't go crazy because he becomes evil. That's part of the movie. Mm. In the old golem legends, uh, because it is a Jewish legend, he has to be turned or uh, he has to have his scroll taken out or turned off or his amulet taken off, what have you, for the Sabbath, so that he doesn't do any work on that day. He has to just oh, not be alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the rabbi mm. forgets. And then that's when he goes on a rampage in the stories. But in the movie, he goes on a rampage because of the demon and astrology and blah, blah, blah. Which is completely different. But I think the reason they went that way is because, like, 
who's going to know all of this Jewish lore out there in the movie watching land? So they were like, but what people like are demons. So we're going to bring some demons into this. Yeah. You know, and the Kabbalism Always stuff has some, some has some demonology and a little bit in there and talking angels and things. So yeah. watching him wave that glowing pentagram around, I was like, why don't people talk about this scene? <laughs> oh my God. Fantastic. Actually, the movie didn't have, I was actually pretty, pretty into the movie. Mm. And shocking because it was silent, but you know, I'm, I'm willing to watch a silent movie. We've watched a few. Yeah. And uh, it really was pretty good. Like, they, the special effects even were good, obviously, when raving about that scene. And just watching that dummy bump around and the actual story, because they had a love interest story in there as well, which always helps with a movie. And they're always like, why do you got to put a love interest in here? Like, because it really does help plots move along because I it gives everybody be, motivations. But there could be, like, better motivations in that. Mm -hmm. There could be two people who are, like, vying to control the golem. And, you know, like, that's more interesting. Yes, because there is an assistant involved. So the rabbit has an assistant who is sweet on the daughter. And so, of course, he's the one that brings the, the golem back to this daughter must have attack been the person. Piece. Um, you know, silent movie hot. That's pretty good. Yeah, long hair. Still, mm, mm, I love yeah. long hair. There you go. Let's see, very long hair. <laughs> so yeah, everyone seemed to want a piece of her. Miriam, that was her name. Mm -hmm. So lame parts. I don't know. I thought it was quite all right because there's a little bit of wheeling and dealing with the uh, the emperor wants to. Um, he's signing edict to force all the Jewish people to leave the area. Uh, to leave the town, and then uh, the rabbi goes, convinces him not to do that, and then he goes back. So there's a little bit of back and forth with that. But, uh, yeah, you could have gotten in there some more. Had uh, the evil assistant, they could have been evil. I mean, all like, hey, 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 I'm stealing the gold of at nights. <laughs> yeah, I love oh, that would be good. Like, double-crossing and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Or... The golem opens an orphanage, I think that would be That's good. also good. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not going to say it's lame because it was a silent movie. Definitely not. No, that's never... Really and uh, the so. version I saw, you, you can watch it on YouTube. There's like a million versions of it because it's well in the public domain. And there's even like, I found one really well um, restored version, but it was all in German. Mm. Like the original German, so I didn't watch that version. But the, it was so well restored and it even looked to be a little bit colorized. I was like, oh, this is fantastic. So, it's totally fine. So, you just skipped to the part movie. where that chick's getting her head bumped off the pavement. <laughs> no, I hadn't watched it at that point. Because <laughs> oh. I watched the first version. The version I watched was... Uh, it seemed to be like a stretched out version. So, I was watching it at double time, which made it regular time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know, because I ended up watching it in about 50 minutes. I think it was 160 minutes or something like that. But, yeah, it was great. I loved it. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad I decided to... I wasn't going to do good the Golem as the monster this week. And you know about that. And I was just charmed by this movie. Because mm -hmm. I was like, the story's great, but what are you going to talk about the story? And I was like, you talk about the movie? And I was like, the way I'd always heard the movie described, the exact same plot as the old stories. But it's a completely different plot. Yeah. It's completely different. I'm so glad I watched it because I was like, this is what I want to talk about. This movie monster. Because it's a movie monster to be sure, and not just a folklore legend. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Like the difference between like a Disney movie and like one of those fairy tales. Like, they take everything, compress it, make it into a long story, and you're like, yes. Mm-hmm. Any more housekeeping to do? No. Well, I mean, you can always say the socials and YouTubes and all that. Oh, uh, yeah, the usual. Uh, the YouTube is, I think it's at Ridley Stonebrook. Anyway, there'll be a link at SpookyRoomProductions.com. SpookyRoomProductions.com. And you'll be able to find all the links there to get to the, uh, the socials and the YouTubes. There's a YouTube button at the top. And, yeah, comment on the scores. Uh, Instagram is the quickest way to get hold of me because that's the only thing I really check all the time. Or email, I check that a lot. And you can uh, never reach me because I'm not anywhere. Yes. <laughs> we do have, I do have a Facebook for Spooky Room Productions, but I am never there. I never post anything on it. I used to post, uh, like, updates for the blog, which I don't really keep up anymore. But there will be coming back for Concordia if that ever happens. I'm working on the starter set for that. The tourism booklet for the Concordia Island is, I'll say, halfway done. I'm working on art right now. The maps are done, the writing is done, editing is done, and hopefully you'll see something of that soon. All the art that's being done right now is for the art show, da -da -da, November 5th, St. John Art Center. And you can see more about that on the website at some point when I have some more details to give. And we're out. Outro music. Bye. <laughs> we didn't do final score again. You have to and we're back. Final score on the thing. I got to put final down. score in there. <laughs>
<laughs> Final score. All right. Time for the final score! Final score! <laughs> What's the final score for the goal? Well, uh, it's the lowest one we have yet. Oh? It's 29. Really? Yeah. Oh. It's... Is it because of his weakness? Um... Oh! His weakness and his low fuckability. Yeah. That's a... <laughs> that'll take you that, That'll take you down in our scoring system. <laughs> <laughs> Weaknesses and low fuckability. Yeah, it's funny because the, none of the, all the scores are out of 10. So none of them were like weighted, you know what I mean? <coughs> they all yeah. have equal uh, impact. And as they should. I fuckability so is just as important as bar fighting. When, you, when you're looking and <laughs> you're talking about monsters. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Weird category. <laughs> Rip. You helped. I'm the one who came up with fuck it. Would you fuck it? <laughs> That's right. Don't blame That's that one on me. That's the only category I did come up with. Mm-hmm. Because it's funny to me. Can you there give you us go. the uh, rundown of the scores? What? Uh, what score does everybody have so far? Okay. Original. <coughs> OG Frankenstein. Yes. 34. That's high. <laughs> the reanimates. 30.5. Wow. This is all out of 80. And then, like <clears> I <throat> said, the golem is 29. So we seem to be losing points every single time. Well, I'm picking my less favorite ones, so they're my less favorite for a reason. Apparently, <laughs> if you look at your monsters and you're like, what are my favorite monsters? It's because the scoring system is accurate. You know, it's, you know, it's true. We're proving it every time. And my <laughs> least favorite one is going to be up next, and it's going to make a miserable score. Miserable. <laughs> And I didn't want to do the golem, and I ended up doing the golem. Maybe I'm going to do this one, or I'm going to pick another one. I don't know. I don't know. You're so passionate. <laughs> but I don't want to say what it is, because it might be different. Yeah. So I'm not don't, going to tell you guys no, what's no, coming up. I'm going to break people's hearts. Because we have to have the fourth contender for Frankenstein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'll know which... And then we'll move on to the next category, which will style. be I don't know. But then we'll know which Frankenstein-style creature So far, it's looking the like the Frankenstein is still the classic. <laughs> OG classic is the way to go. Yeah. Hmm? So far, that's with our grading systems. And we're gone. Why don't